Hello everybody, my name is Yulia and today I'm going to talk to you about atomic clearing deposition. So what is atomic clearing deposition? How you can see from the name, the ultimate goal of this technique is to deposit singular atomic layers on the substrate of choice. As you can see from this picture, single atomic layers of different or similar materials are deposited onto the substrate. And the fidelity of deposited films should be extremely high to ensure that it is really single atomic layer deposition. So what we require for atomic layer deposition method is atomic precision and as you can see here multi-layer deposition. So what are the applications of atomic layer deposition? Let's say we learned how to create single atomic films. Where, where can we use it? Uh, since we're talking about microelectronics here, the first application of course is transistors. We can create gate oxides of desired thickness with extremely high atomic precision. And hence the properties of the transistor can be very well controlled and it is extremely important when the scale of our devices go down to nanometer scale. Also, ALD can be used in building capacitors. You can deposit thin film dielectrics between the plates, again with extremely high fidelity. And here you can see an example of, of the so-called trench capacitors. And the, and the appropriate scheme. Also, we can deposit transition metal nitrides. Those materials can be barriers for metals, for example. And also, you can of course deposit metal films. Metal films are used for creating thin conducting layers contacts in microelectronics. LED can also be used in biomedical and chemistry applications because the surface control that can be achieved with ALD is extremely high and by modifying the surface features with deposit in single atomic layer or multiple single atomic layers the properties of the surface can be significantly changed which is very important for biomedical and chemistry applications. The precursor for atomic layer deposition is chemical vapor deposition. In the case of CVD, two gases are simultaneously flown into the chamber. Those gases react on the surface and high temperature of the surface catalyzes the reaction. Everything is done in vacuum, of course. High purity and extreme uniformity of gas flow is required to create a uniform film on the surface. But of course it's not going to be atomic thickness. In CVD there's always a trade-off between extremely reactive gases that ensure a very fast process and uniformity of this process. If the gases are too reactive then they will react before they meet the substrate in the air. In this case a particle would be formed and dropped onto the surface and of course uniformity would be compromised. So what materials are used for CVD? It's historically silicon was deposited onto the substrate for semiconductor technology and microelectronics. Originally silicon crystals were not pure enough for microelectronics application. 
Usually CVD for silicon deposition was based on those equations, but the first one is the most common one. And here you can see that only one gas is introduced into the chamber. It's possible to deposit other materials with CVD techniques. Metals, for example, like tungsten or copper, and so on. Nitrides, titanium nitride, silicon nitride, and so on. Of course, oxides are very important. Silicon oxide is the major dielectric for microelectronic applications. And recently, nanotubes became popular and graphene layers. And even polymers are possible to deposit with CVD. Of course, if you talk about CVD, you always talk about plasma-enhanced CVD. So what is plasma-enhanced CVD? Uh, in the chamber, the plasma is formed usually by two electrodes. Plasma can provide easier activation of the chemical reaction on the surface. It means that you would need lower temperature of the substrate for reaction to happen. Why do we need lower temperature? Of course, it's very important for sensitive material. It means that we can work with biological materials, with organic materials, because the temperature can be lowered significantly from, for example, 800 degrees to about 250 degrees range. So coming back to atomic layer deposition, the process that evolved from chemical vapor deposition, we should note that Atomic layer deposition is a two-step process. In ALD, two gases never meet in the chamber. First, one gas is introduced into the chamber, and one layer is formed on the surface. Second, another gas is introduced into the chamber, and the second layer is formed on the surface. And then, two elements react to form the material of choice on the substrate. This process is self-limiting only single atomic or molecular layer can be deposited onto the surface because for example this particle would not stick to the surface and would bump right off the attachment can be either physical, which is rather weak, or chemical. Now let's talk about characteristics of atomic layer deposition. So flow uniformity and temperature are not as important for ALD as they were important for CVD, because the process is self-limiting, but the temperature should fit into a specific range for this process to work. Local atom molecule concentration does need to be uniform, provided that flow of the material is strong enough. This process is extremely conformal over uneven topography. And of course, you can create designer multi-layer films by depositing various materials in the order that you want creating creating unique thin films. The, the disadvantages of the process is that it's generally much slower and if the goal is to deposit multi-layer film you have to wait a long time. High purity of the substrate is required for the sticking factor to work and of course careful study of materials is required because you have to know your chemistry extremely well to ensure that the attachment rate is fast enough for you and that it is possible at all. Here you can see the table of materials that are usually deposited by ALD. There are different setups for ALD. 
for example, radical enhanced ALD. If we deposit radicals, it means that the attachment to the surface would be much stronger. And usually all those systems use plasma enhanced ALD, because plasma creates radicals. Also, another possible trick for ALD is spatial ALD. In this case, two gases never occupy the same chamber. Instead, the sample is rotated and goes from one chamber to the other, and so on and so forth. So no pumping or venting is needed. Gases are physically separated from each other. It means that the chambers will also be clean and no flaking will occur. There is much more to say about atomic layer deposition, but this requires much more time than we have here. Particularly, specific chemistry can be discussed for different materials of interest and different systems. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope you learned something.